Welcome to The Secret Show, recommended by four out of five doctors. The other one's dead. I'm Patricia Steer, and wearing a coat of credibility, Mark Sargent joins me. Hello, Patricia. I'm in the lab right now. Are you doing science? <laughs> Can't you tell? This coat proves that I'm doing science. Whatever we do wearing these coats is absolute positive fact. I wrote a paper saying that Santa Claus is absolutely bona fide. But were you wearing the coat? I was. Oh, so sure. Of course. You can trust me. I'm in science. <laughs> you can trust me because I play a doctor on TV. Yeah. Seriously, you look like, like you could be walking down a hall with a stethoscope right now. I need a clipboard and a pen. Just Ask somebody else to check for bedpans, and we'll be we'll be all good. Right. Or a psych ward. Oh yeah. Well, being in flat Earth, sometimes we feel like we are in a psych ward. <laughs> right. Like liking the monogram, which I can barely see. There, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it yep. doesn't say doctor, Patricia Steer, but you don't need to be identified as a doctor when you wear a lab coat because everyone just assumes you must be one. Yeah, that's not a patch or a sticker, folks. <laughs> It's hand embroidered, but that's hand embroidered. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the lab coats are, you know, obviously all in fun, but we are proving a point here, as did the last Flat Earth Clue on Mark's channel, the uh -huh. coat of credibility clue. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go to his channel and do so. It's when you wear something like this, people believe you know what you're talking about. Absolutely. Now, in Flat Earth, those of us who do experiments, and I know that's not me, but many of us do, those of us who do blogs or videos, whatever it is that we do, um, we say we know what we're talking about because of all the tests that have been done and, and all of the evidence that points to the Earth not being a spinning globe. But a lot of people won't take us seriously. So an idea to wear lab coats was, was brought up by, I believe, a guy named Dan the Waterman out of Los Angeles. Is he the first one to come up with the idea? No, but it was good. I mean, obviously we've had a lot of ideas thrown around and I kind of danced around the subject when I went after Bill Nye about 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. But it really struck me when Dan was at the Flat Earth Meetup in Arcadia in Los Angeles with you and me. In June that, 2018. Yeah, yeah, just, just a little while ago and how he held a captive audience how easily it was to for him to accomplish that and part of it had to do with the lab coat because he was the only one there wearing one and it had uh, i think the water guy thing you know water supply whatever nobody will read very closely whatever patch you have on your lab coat for sure no no generally they won't but it was it was interesting to me and i thought you know what let let's let's expand this into something a little bit bigger which is the the code of credibility which is everybody in a lab coat setting whether you're a doctor or a psychologist or a lab technician take your pick uh it was invented for one reason it's a uniform it is invented it was invented to give the wearer literal credibility and we now have equated that with all things science you know, if a scientist comes out on camera and wears this coat and makes a statement, he is going to be given bonus points for wearing the coat, regardless of the information he's putting forward. So when Flat Earthers come out with information that's true, but we're wearing, you know, jeans and a T-shirt or, a, you know, a blouse and jeans or a dress, right. we might not be taken to be as credible as yeah. if we we're wearing one of these, which is a complete and utter joke, but yeah. it's true. And, and several things that bugged me about that was one, how many times is the average person, you and me included, how much, how many times do we actually run into someone wearing one of these? If you're not in a hospital, for example, you just don't see it. We, we don't talk to a lot of lab technicians and, and people that, that, you know, that are in this. We see it most of the time in media. That's mm -hmm. where you see it. Television shows all day long, movies all day long, going back a long ways. Again, which is why, you know, mad scientist, evil genius. Every, it does no dumb person has ever been put in a freaking lab coat. Even uh, uh, the nutty professor played originally by uh, Jerry Lewis, you know, white lab coat, but he was a genius. Interesting. Yeah. I think it might be a good idea now that I've got this to keep it in my car 
And at any moment, it might become necessary for me to put it on to get out of a situation or to, I don't know, it just seems like it might come you, handy. I think you could. I think you could put it on and absolutely. Uh, like get out of a ticket? Sure. Oh, I think you could get out of a ticket. And sure. Then <laughs> uh, seriously, how, how, how easy would that be where you put on the jacket and it's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to work. And all you have to do is you can make up a fictitious lab name. Yeah, you know, I'm going, I, I'm oh, going to the lab. I've got a brain in this cooler here in my passenger seat, and it's right. pretty dicey. I've got to get there within the next 15 minutes, or the patient dies. Oh, you don't even have to do that. You could you can make it even easier and say, look, I I'm I'm on call. You know, I, I was called in to to deal with something in a last minute meeting, and and they'd be like, oh, okay. I might yeah. get a motorcycle escort to the hospital. Yeah, you might. <laughs> you absolutely might. Uh, well, we're not recommending that flat earthers get lab coats or anything like that. But if you decide to get a lab coat, I think it could be fun in doing your presentation. Oh, um, I no, I'm recommending it. I mean, there's a reason. I'm I'm not just going to get just one. I'm going to get the cool one too. I'm 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 debating whether or not to to. I'm, I'm going to definitely bring this one to the Canadian conference, which yes. is going to be in a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and when it comes to the November conference, I'm thinking of getting the Mandarin style. You know, with the buttons all up at the top. I've Deal. never seen anybody in the profession, medical profession or science profession these days wearing the one with the Mandarin collar. I know, I know, but it's so cool. It is such a, it's such a better looking jacket. I know it's not as functional because you have it up on the top and uh, it doesn't have any pockets. Does, doesn't it seem sort of 1800 scientist? Yeah, it does. <laughs> That's probably why, <laughs> That's why I love it. It's, it's got, it's got Victor Frankenstein written all over it. Well, you know, when you wore for a while, those glasses that didn't have lenses in them and fooled right. everybody including me yeah. they did give you an air of intelligence not yeah. that you're not already intelligent and i guess that was the point you were proving a couple of uh, things. the point i was proving i yeah. and those and those were the cheapest literally the cheapest glasses you could find they were 3d glasses from a movie theater that i just popped out the lenses That's all and I also did. it shows how little we actually really look at things I see you all the time, and if I'd seen you wearing them in person, I would have known that they didn't have lenses in them. Right. But seeing you like this, you know, on a, on a YouTube video, Google Hangout, I didn't know. I just thought you got glasses and thought, oh, that's interesting, cool. Um, but Month, they lent months. an air of intelligence. Yeah, Sorry. months. Nobody figured that out. No. And then somebody finally said so. And I think you started just pushing the envelope by putting your finger through yeah, it. Yeah, putting my finger through it. <laughs> It's which, like, wake up, people. Look at what's right in front of your eyes. Yeah, which was mimicked in uh, the the new Ghostbusters movie with the reception. Well, I've got glasses, too. These. I have lots of glasses. But if I put these on with this, literally, my IQ goes up like 40 points. Right. In the eyes of somebody out there in, you know, regular mainstream. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. So... Keep a lab coat in your car, and maybe yeah, you might it's, need. Uh, it's it's come a in cool handy. thing, and and you and you get my point. And and I wasn't. I uh, there are a couple of things I want to bring up. First off, is yes, I did go out of my way to hammer on Bill Nye a bit because he deserves it. Uh, and this is not a jealousy thing. This is not. It is. It's not even that he doesn't deserve it. Yes, he put in the time. He he did some of the the legwork. And he spent five years doing the show, you know, for, for Disney, the Bill Nye, the science guy. What bugged me was the laziness of the media in that they kept calling him for bigger and bigger things for him to give an opinion on because he would come out in the jacket and because he looked like we're talking about, looked more credible on camera. He, he just, it's like, yeah, let's, let's ask his opinion on something small. And then it started building to where all of a sudden he's on a climate change panel. And now he's on a panel with physicists. And now he's talking about the Mars rover. And now he's at the White House and all these things. All because he wore the coat and looked the part. And of course, it also helps to be thin, angular features. I mean, he looked like, honestly, if he was in Hollywood when Revenge of the Nerds was cast, he absolutely would have been in it. No question. All he had to do is wear a lab coat. He would have been about that age. It would have been it would have been perfect. The other thing I want to mention, and that was a letter that was sent, I think, to both of us, was the one person one person wrote me and said they were disappointed in the clue in clue fourteen, the code of credibility, because I didn't take it down a dark path. And I can't remember the name of the experiment off the top of my head. You guys can look it up if you want. But 
this particular person wanted me to go into the dark side of the lab coat, which is we uh, do things, you know, pe people in lab coat can order us to do some awful things. And one was an experiment in the 60s where off camera test subjects were shocked even though they weren't really, they were just actors pretending to be shocked. And the person sitting there flipping the switch was just taking orders from the person in the lab coat. And I thought, and, and we, that's just one example of many, many examples where science has, has taken their power too far, uh, even in an experiment like that. But it just goes to show uh, what this can do. And it shows how much we bend to authority when we have to. Well, somebody in the chat says that uh, the woman who did the spirit cooking, I forgot her name, Abramovich or something along those lines. Irk Child says uh, she did something where she had people wear white lab coats while eating human cake. Of course, it wasn't really human cake, and I don't really know the whole story behind it, but I, I could look it up right now and see. Um, I, I would, my mind would never go toward the spirit cooking if I saw lab coats. I don't right. think most people's would. In no. fact, I don't know anything about spirit cooking other than videos I've seen people involved in conspiracy do. So um, I, I don't see that stuff in any sort of mainstream thing I might look at accidentally. No idea. Corporate models also use lab coats and, of course, actors. And I was also trying to kind of unblur the lines there. And that is, what's the difference between an actor wearing a lab coat and just anybody wearing a lab coat? It's almost none in our subconscious. We automatically, you know, I mean, look, I'm looking at you right now and you absolutely look more intelligent to me. Of course, it also helps that your hair is in a certain way. Uh, <laughs> but but w with the glasses, even more so. And in fact, with the glasses, you look more like a nerd. Right now, you look like a professional. You know, I'm I'm seeing more of a psychologist than anything. But with a stethoscope around your neck, you could absolutely be a doctor. I'm looking up the uh, Marina Abramovic spirit cooking and people eating the human cake, which was a cake made in the shape of a human being. Right. Um, it looks like they're wearing chef's coats which would make a lot of sense. Which is also interesting because the chef's, chef's coats, coats, white. coats are similar, except they're usually... Or it um, might be a lab coat. I really can't tell. They're wearing white coats. Chef it coats could be are, either. I have coat, no idea. But it chef, doesn't give lab coats a bad name. Chef coats are shorter. They're double-breasted or they've got the wrap. They do have the mandarin cut in some cases. And uh, it is also a uniform. But you don't generally get confused. It's inter interesting, though, that a chef coat is similar to a lab coat. Interesting. Mm. Well, I and guess... And not all chefs wear them. In both cases, you're trying to show... What are you trying to show? Competence, intelligence, the fact that... I don't know. what it's What is this trying to say to people? What, you mean initially why it was invented? Yeah. It was just a uniform. It was invented by... But I mean, it could be like striped or something. Why white? Uh, well, if you're a chef reason. or if you work in a lab with, uh, I don't know, um, dyes, colors, or blood or something, then the stains could get on you. It's yeah. like, why do painters wear white coveralls? It doesn't make it literally they should be wearing black everybody should wear black so yeah they should it, it wouldn't show, show the blood anything. or the dye or the you know food right. but this is more tradition than anything else and and it, <clears throat> and it and it stuck once it crossed generations then it stuck so it, you know doctors of all types that's really what it is advanced education of all types you know um this is a good point uh, by zulu one who says simply just cleanliness sure and maybe that's true. Look at NASA. Not just cleanliness like not dirty, but NASA, why do they wear the white um, spacesuits? They could be any other color. Why white? Right. Because it shows good, pure, yeah. honest. Non-threatening. Absolutely. Yeah. Out of all the military branches, and NASA is one of them, the astronauts wear white. And even though they're toying around with the new blue uniforms and stuff like that, kind of leaning towards the Air Force side of things, I don't think they'll ever get away from white. Why are all the astronauts suits pure white? Yeah. It is an interesting thing. And I, I understand, I get it because psychologically, white is the color of purity and innocence. Right. And even, it, it's even Elon Musk's 
mannequin like a, astronaut. Like a white. first bride, you know, of the first Ooh, wedding. Oh, yes. Also wears white. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Purity, innocence. Yes. And in this case, intelligence. I want to say hello to all in the live chat, like Ur Urk Childs, thanks. Um, Anne-Marie says red would look cooler. <laughs> it would be more practical. Uh, Globebusters here, uh, Midnight Gardener as well. And somebody named X77123583, now that's a name, says doctors are wearing black now, and that should scare you. Gulags again. No, I no doctors. Of, I haven't seen black. any doctors wearing black yet. I have no hey, idea. Hey, makes me think though. You know, uh, remember the Wizard of Oz when the scare the scarecrow wanted a brain, and what he give him at the end, he gave him a diploma. However, if I was to rewrite that movie, I give, give the scarecrow. I coat. give. I give him a lab coat. Same thing though. A diploma is just a piece of paper that says something is different than it was before you had the paper. Right. So is this really a diploma that you're wearing? The diploma's on your wall, but you can't take it with you. This you can. Is that what we're saying here? Are we saying that this is more or less you're, you're wearing your education on your sleeve, so to speak? Hmm. There have been people who've pretended that they were doctors. Um, and there's even movies. Um, what's the oh, name of the movie? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> how, there's how, a... many, how many hospital shows have we seen where someone just sneaks in, grabs a coat, and then wheels <laughs> somebody out for the great escape? <laughs> all the time. Yes. I'm thinking of a uh, a movie with Leo in it. Um, oh, I don't know. Oh, you know. Oh, Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. One of the roles he played. Was oh, it? heck. Uh, Harrison Ford, The Fugitive. Yes. Uh, I mean, it, it happens. It is. A, it wear is the a, coat. People is, will actually start cutting open a body. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because <laughs> you said so. Yeah, it's the easiest plot device to, to, to grab when you're there. It's okay. He runs into a hospital. What do we do? He goes into a storeroom, grabs a coat, puts it on, and then just starts making small talk with people. Oh, McCoy, when he, when he rescued Kirk in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Hmm. He was walking through the hospital, treating people with devices no one had ever seen, giving them pills that like heal, heal them just like that. <laughs> but he was wearing the ja the jacket. Interesting. Yeah. And oh, and by the way, uh, Bill Nye rarely wears the white jacket. He, he wears a light blue one. Light blue most of the time. Which I've is seen, weird. I've seen him in white. I got a shot of it in there in the clue yes. with him wearing white. But it was for a television show. But when he's doing his normal thing, it's blue. I don't know. Maybe maybe his eyes just pop more. When he's wearing light blue. I don't know. Maybe wearing the white jacket, it was he it was he was told that looks like you're trying to pretend to be something that you're not. Maybe. maybe. No maybe. idea. I mean, um, he's not he's not shy about saying that he's not a scientist. You're right, but that doesn't but it doesn't make any difference because if he's on CNN answering questions about climate change, people are going, Oh yeah, he's the science guy from my childhood. You could tell somebody all you want you're not a scientist while wearing a lab coat. Right. And they're going to be saying uh huh. Uh huh. But, right. but how do I cure this, or yeah. how do I fix this, or tell me, blah blah blah. They 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 won't be listening to your words. They'll be looking at what you represent. The the uniform says a lot, and it's one of the few uniforms. I mean, you obviously remember I mentioned the fireman and the policeman. If you try to imitate one of those two guys, it's illegal. You'll get arrested. You can put this on all day long. No one's going to say anything because it covers so many bases. And well, speaking. We Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, and speaking of bases, what, what you're saying that all they're going to see is the freaking coat, it mm -hmm. reminds me again of Tom Selleck when he would, one of his perks for doing Magnum was the Detroit uh, Tigers, the baseball team, allowed him to suit up, shave his mustache, and he would sit in the dugout with the players. And even though he was not a professional baseball player, since he was tall enough, in shape, and he wore the uniform, no one questioned him. No one questioned him. He just, he owned it. So that's what we're doing right now. We're owning it. Yes, we have. Uh, we're exercising cultural approbation. Is that the right. right phrase? We have. We have taken away the lab coat from those who have the degrees where they're supposed to be wearing it, and put them on our own backs to show that we know what we're talking about, and right. we are practicing the scientific method. And by right. we, I mean all of us who are flat Earth. Right. Anyway. Let's see. Oh, funny from uh, uh, 
Jose J.G. Gonzalez wearing a white coat. It's like having a black belt on the pseudoscience world. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Racer F.E. just dropped into the show and says, what the F.E. is going on around here? <laughs> exactly. The Flat Earth Vegan say, I believe everything you guys say. <laughs> you That's should. That's the idea. <laughs> Hello to Cami in the chat. And Jack Frost says, Mark, you look nice, but the baseball hat ruins the look. Maybe try a surgeon's cap. <laughs> okay, one, it's not a baseball cap. That's true. It's a military cap. It's a military cap. So still, if you maybe. don't know that. Yeah. And no, a surgeon's cap would have been too much because then it would have pigeonholed me into the... Um, yeah, you want to be of all sciences. Right, of all That's sciences. That's why when I had this embroidered, I didn't put Dr. Steer. <laughs> right. Yes. Doesn't mean... Yeah, you could have. Again, that's that's your not that you get pulled over much, but you absolutely get out of tickets if you had Dr. Steer. I don't know. Honestly, Patricia Steer, <laughs> you should keep it in the car. Funny. But you know, it also could come in handy at some sort of time, which I hope will never occur, where things go horribly wrong in society and you are out and about and you want to lead people away from danger, or you wanna you wanna you know you can do it, but you need something on you to make you look credible. Right. Pop this baby on and you'll be able to um, marshal the forces. If you've got a megaphone and one of these things on, you'll be able to get people to band together and accomplish something most likely. Oh, heck, Let, let's go all the way to uh, Nazi Germany when they divvied up the the, sci the rocket scientists out there. If you were just if you were just some schlub and you put on this coat, and you're standing with people. It's like, OK, does he go to prison or does he go to America to start a new life in rocket science? You'd be shuffled off on the bus with the other guys. True. So this always have get, a code of credibility on you. Yeah, yeah this, this can get you out of a lot of things. It can also save lives. It can also <laughs> save lives. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hello to uh, GM Cox 33. And uh, Cami is here. And Martin Leadkey is here as well. And I mentioned Anne Marie. Daniel Rez, Rez, Resner. Excuse me, Resna. Reza. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Daniel. I don't know what happened there. Um, Realm Walker is here who said that the reason that the white coats are worn at all is because it's to show you're clean. Mm. I get it, but I don't get it when it comes to painters because a good painter should have a totally paint covered outfit on. Well, a lot of the time they do. It starts white. No, I, I've worked with painters and it, it, it helps because then, you know, you're you're wiping stuff off on it all the time and you can kind of see what's what you're working with. Got it. Um, but they huff a lot of paint. Um, oh, you know, Realm Walker uh, is part of that cool video that just came out a couple of days ago, mm, right? Nevermore. Nevermore. Yeah. Let's talk Nevermore. about that. Nevermore is probably the finest animated flat earth production to date. From what I understand, it took seven months to build and it is polished as polished as anything i've seen out there uh, mainstream or not and it's got a great flat earth soundtrack behind it it's not too long it has a great message and in fact i i watched it twice i was i kind of had it on the background and watched it twice before i saw flat earth clues in animated form was mentioned and I thought that was that was kind of cool, and it is is really neat. So I mirrored it. I encourage anyone else to mirror it if you get a chance. Look it up, Flat Earth Nevermore mm -hmm. by Realm Walker and friend, of, friend Yahweh. of Yahweh, right? Yep. And Who uh, also did Round and Curvy. Yes, exactly. So you can go to Friend of Yahweh channel or Realm Walker's channel, and right. I'll put the links in the description box of this video. Right. Um, Chucky Beats did the main score. So um, yeah. somebody paste it. Some some of the one of, have a wrench. Paste that thing in chat if you get a chance. Flat Earth Nevermore. It's a really really great video. I yes. Hope it, uh, Hope we get some traction. And I'm glad that um, Realm Walker is in the chat because that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today, and it sort of spurred me to to bring it up. What? There's always good vid videos that come out, but sometimes it's it's um, almost impossible to mention every good video that 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 comes out. Be and I don't want to miss any. Too far though. I mm -hmm. have to congratulate you, and I'm going to paste this in chat right now for everybody. Which is you had your first expose article. Expose. That's expose. <laughs> yes, 
where where Wait, you, I was already in Hustler magazine. You, you were talking about that one. Well, I don't know if I actually read the the Hustler article in print. I the I was too interested in the other articles. And by the way, it, I was not in Hustler magazine in that way. It, it's no. on my channel. In case you don't know, I was just interviewed by a writer from Hustler magazine. There's it, nothing below board there. But this article is, is wonderful. It's at the HoustonChronicle.com and it's called Spheres of Influence. Houston woman shares her flat earth gospel via YouTube and it's easy to find. If you type in flat earth right now into Google and click on news, you will see Patricia right below Brian Cox at the top of the page. And good for you. It is about time that, that somebody did something on you. And it's great. There's eight fantastic pictures in there. Well, seven. One has me kind of in the background looking ogreish, But the rest of them are fantastic. And the text is wonderful. And, and you were quoted. I, I thought it was very well done. And uh, the writer could have done a massive hit piece on you and us. And she didn't. No, in fact, she didn't even do a hit piece at all on Flat Earth at all. There's nothing yeah. in there saying we're not so crazy or it's just really, it's and it's not some kind of glowing, it's just nice. It's uh, not nice. It's just normal. It's not a spin doctoring, let's make fun of Flat Earth, let's do a hit piece on it at all. Yeah. And I thought it was amazing. But so, it it almost, I swear to God, the, the, the woman who wrote this, she, she, you seem to make an impression on her because it read kind of like, if, if, I was, if I was living in the Houston area and I didn't know much, I was, if I was flat earth curious, I'd try to find you. I'd be like, who is this? Who is this mystery woman? <laughs> and I would, I would contact the paper, and I know they wouldn't give out your information or anything, but you're not that hard to find. Well, she came to my house a couple of different times, and we, we you know, had drinks, sat on my sofa, chatted, my cats and her got along well, and she was even on one of our shows, in fact, maybe two of our shows in the back background. Right. Remember that? She, yeah. That's when they did the photographs uh, that were, ended up in this, in this newspaper article. It's also an online article. Right. And um, Houston itself is the fourth largest city by population in the United States. So the fact that there's an article on Flat Earth on their online as well as print newspaper of the fourth largest city in the United States, and it's not negative in the least. No. That's a win for Flat Earth. Yeah, and in a NASA town. Sorry, the yeah, NASA in the, town. In the NASA town. I can't yeah. believe that. And it took a long time because it was such a long time ago that she was here. I mean, right. Months, oh, yeah, my old ago. banners in there, and I still got the glasses. Yeah, yeah, and I was thinking that, though, maybe, you know, the, the people higher up in the newspaper said, you know, it's a nice idea for an article, but we'll never gonna, we're never going to run that because, you know, right. NASA and all that right. uh, will we'll lose face or some kind of money. No, they went with it. So, yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, good, I'm happy good, with it. Good, good for you, and congratulations, and I hope it stays up towards the top of the charts because again we don't have it's in fact i'm pretty sure it's the first female profile piece in flat mm. earth no there was one on uh karen karen p out of the uk quite a while ago R okay yeah you, you yes. know what you are right that was the first one and i'm sure first, there's other first american you know, one which yeah means it's the only one that really counts no <laughs> don't say that <laughs> what American, I can say that. Uh, yeah, you can, but you'd be wrong. We all can. <laughs> this is Patricia being PC, but look, I'm wearing the coat. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, right. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I should doubt you. American Boy, you scientist. And, you and I could never get in an argument wearing these coats because we both would know what we're talking about. It's a <laughs> it would be a stalemate. <laughs> you know, no, no, wait. Hang on. I see your point, Patricia. Mm. Yes. That's yes, very interesting. Uh, Funny. You, you and I should co-write a paper on that. Let's say hello to Five Arts Liberalis and uh, Markovsky and hey, Robbie D of Celebrate Truth. That reminds me of what we touched on a little earlier, just in passing, which was the conference coming up in Edmonton and the one coming up in Denver. If you don't know much about it, in the description box of this video, you will find a link so that you can go right to the website and get your tickets and get set and get ready to roll. Yeah. I'm starting to get excited about going to Canada. Starting yeah. to get excited. Yeah, I mean, we've got a yeah. little less than a month. Right. And it uh, should be a lot of fun. So. Remember when it was really far away? Yeah, yeah. Time well, flies. Denver kind of seems really far away. 
Denver still is far away. But pretty soon we'll be saying, in a little more than 30 days, and you know that's going to happen, and it just right. comes up on you. But I vow this time, unlike the first in Raleigh, North Carolina in 2017, to enjoy the moment more, I guess. I don't know how to put it. But you know when you're at anything, a birthday party, any kind of family event, or a vacation you've waited for, when right. you actually get to the event and are there, you don't enjoy it as much, you've thought about it so much prior to it happening that when you're right there and then it goes by in the blink of an eye. People say that about their weddings. If you've ever been married, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to live in the moment more and enjoy the people and everything. It was just so amazingly overwhelming for the very first conference. Mm -hmm. Now I feel after having one under my belt that I'm, I know what's going to happen and I will enjoy it more. I guess. Right. I hope anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Definitely. Can't wait. Uh, hello to Wesley Stace and to Flat Earth News Talk and Anders Ace and Thunderdome and who else? Everyone. Hi. How's it going? Um, what else is happening in the world of Flat Earth? I know there's lots of things. Right now I'm drawing a blank. Wait a minute. I do have the code of credibility on. Basically, I could just make up anything and you'd believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me, Patricia. I'm a professional. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's uh, happening that you know of? There has been quite a bit of stuff in Flat Earth. Uh, notably, and I hope it happens, is that Rob Skiba, I am hoping that he and Kent Hoven, his long, longtime role model, are going <laughs> to have, uh, ironically, have a debate. You know, here's a guy who he was like so excited back in his younger days to see him on stage. And then, you know, Kent goes to prison for income tax and then comes out and finds out that the world is flat and resists it with everything he's got to where now he is rallying around other religious figures and going. He will not give in. He will not budge an inch. And so Rob's been doing a wonderful series of videos showing how these religious figures are Christian figures are go you know banding with Kent Hovind against flat earth and there has been some sort of debate challenge put out there I hope it happens I would that would be really interesting to see talk about you know uh, the student becoming the master there you go you know once a role model now you're uh, your rival because you have become, because let's face it, uh, Rob is currently probably the most high profile Christian figure in flat earth. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm really happy for him that he has gotten to the point now where even his role models are looking are calling him out by name and, you know, wanting to come after him. Should be fun. Well, I think that Rob's not going to be doing it. Why not? He just did a video saying he wasn't. Oh, he did. He just said, yeah. he was gonna, Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Why not? Like, did, did you did you already watch it? I watched a lot of stuff. I haven't seen it. It's just out right now. Oh man! <laughs> Seriously, you can't miss a moment on flat Earth. Darn it! I turned <laughs> my back for two seconds. I, I mean, I was watching all the other stuff where he and uh, he. Ah, oh well, it would have been nice. I think he would have done a nice job against him. Well. According to Plasso Platus, Ken Hoven stipulated no Bible in the debate. What? Yeah. Oh, that makes it even worse. And Robbie uh, D what, what, is saying what's yes. The, what's the point? Rob Wait, put okay. out an update. Mm -hmm. What? All right. So why are you asking Rob in the first place? Since his fantastic website testingtheglobe.com is all chapter and verse. And oh, I don't know. Kent Hoven is known for a few biblical things. So what the heck? Bob of Globusters just put the uh, the video the link, link in the live chat, and I think my live chat rolls. Cur uh, during the video itself later after it makes its way to YouTube so you can get it from there or or take take a look at it um, well, yeah well the these things happen and yes, Rob do. does what he feels is best and I'm with Rob on this one all right <laughs> well no no I mean it's fine I mean he's got good you know I've, I've trusted his decisions on all sorts of fun things and if that's what he, he but but I don't blame him if because what are you gonna talk about if you're not going to bring in the Bible. Well, just just the straight up science. Is just models to be talked about. Uh, debating whatever, models only. Whatever. Ken Hovind obviously has his beliefs, 
um, being threatened. And when people's beliefs are threatened, there's a way that they act. And it reminds me of the way my cats act. If they hear a loud noise or feel threatened, they puff up, arch their back and make themselves look as big and scary as possible. But in reality, they're just a tiny cat. Right. And that's what is happening with Ken Hovind. Right. But not as cute as my cats. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, uh, not, not a huge deal, I suppose, but still. Well, you know what is a huge deal is the brand new P1000 camera. It's the Nikon Coolpix P1000. The Nikon out P1000, soon. tell me more. Yes, and it's going to be uh, 125 times optical zoom. Yeah. as opposed to the 80-something optical zoom that the, yeah. the current P900 has got. You bunkers, you might as well pick up one now and get some tissues to go with it because you're going to be crying <laughs> once you crank up 125 power zoom. This like, is we, like we needed more help. I know. Well, this is $999, which, yes, I know, is 666 upside down. But okay, okay. Um, it's going to come out in September, so I believe this will be the holiday gift of the year for Flat Earthers if you're into gift giving i think nikon is going to sell more of those than they know because they got to know they saw the spike when it came to 2015 flat earth right. and the p900 yeah. they, they should sponsor some oh, you know, of the bigger shows should. like globusters and chernism and others you know, yes. the, it's like hey ted you heard about I heard sales are really going well on that 900. Yeah, I have no idea what those. They should mean. even give one to Globusters and to Jared and a couple other they people should. to give away. Yeah, you, yeah. It, flat Earthers out there, start contacting execs at Nikon, the <laughs> American side, and see about you know say, hey, look, we're we're backing you guys right now. So I don't think we recommend any other camera at the moment. It's best, pretty awesome. But there's people your that mark. have done incredible work looking at the moon, incredible distance work, seeing ships, et cetera, et cetera. And they're not even using a P900. I mean, they're using I, something le lesser. You I'm know. really curious. I mean, what is that? Uh, 80, 82, 81 or 82 to 125. That's a big jump. Yeah. That's a really big jump. So, what miraculous things will we see? Well, here's the thing. You know how people always say that the naysayers are doubters who feel that flat earth isn't an organic thing and it's being quote unquote rolled out or quote unquote pushed by the government and we're all right. agents or some of right. us are agents or whatever the case right. may be. You know, they would, they meaning the powers that should not be, fill in the blank of your favorite group or groups. Um, they wouldn't allow things like the, the P900 or the P1000. It's going to be weird saying P1000. Anyway, the cool picks, they wouldn't allow that to come out if they wanted to hide the truth. So I don't believe Flat Earth is being rolled out, but I believe it's not being stopped because they could easily yeah. put a stop to all the searches for Flat Earth on YouTube. They could yeah. kill our channels. They could say we were a, um, a danger to ourselves and others. I don't know something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it took them three years before National Geographic started asking the tough questions, saying... All right, is flat Earth bad for our civilization? You know what? What happens? Is it going to do terrible things to our society? Oh, what? It's where have you guys been? Why didn't you ask that question in day one? Why are you waiting now? You know, it seems like everything they're doing is too little, too late. And absolutely, uh, we we should have seen more resistance by now. We haven't. Now, someone named Thunderdome, hello, in the live chat says the new camera comes with an optional fisheye lens. Now, I don't know if you're joking <laughs> or you're telling the truth, um, but that would be interesting. But at least it's optional, you know? Why would you? <laughs> I don't know. I he's messing with Maybe this. he's messing with me. Bob of Globusters is messing with me by saying the P1000 also has warp drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, well. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bob says he is joking. I'm not gullible, but well, maybe sometimes. <laughs> you know, we didn't have, uh, did you have that in your high school graduating class? Most gullible? Most gullible? I don't even remember. They had them all the way up until my year and then they discontinued it. I don't know why. And I'm sure they don't have any negative stuff now. They had things like best hair, best smile. Best fashion, most wanted to be on a desert island with. Mm -hmm. Most muscles, class clown. The usual. Oh, that's but why is most gullible? Oh, that would be negative. That most gullible is negative. 
And I, I used to kind of look at it's like you, you always kind of look for it. And it's like, oh, that girl's the most gullible. Yeah, what's her number? Oh. <laughs> Funny, but I'm a doctor. Way, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here's my coat. <laughs> <laughs> what should we check you for? Um, you know what? These could be really great for picking up chicks in high school. Get a couple lab coats on you and your best guy buddy, and go hit the town. <laughs> I'm not recommending that, by the way. No, no, of course not. <laughs> no, but but if you want, you know what, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here, and that is, you know what this coat would be because you you brought it up, and that is the clipboard. If you're with just walking around in a clipboard on a street, you know, trying to get signatures or trying to talk to people, tough to do. But if you had a two man team, one both with coats or one with a coat and one with a camera, absolutely people would stop for you. You know, especially it might be if you had good. a clipboard. For street activism. Street activism. To get the attention in a, you know, like, um, like in, like I was talking with Roxanne, um, and she's in London and does street activism. Right. And it, I'm not suggesting that she wear a lab coat, but I'm saying that when they're in a busy area like Hyde Park, Speaker's Corner, when there's people everywhere mulling around, if somebody had a lab coat on and a clipboard, it might get more people over to where you are. Oh, yeah. I know the Los Angeles group of flat earthers who um, did the Arcadia meetup and, and all of that. Uh, I think some of them have got lab coats now. Right. So I think that they're kind of going to work that into those, into their, into their things that they do. It's possible anyway. Right. Hmm. Right. Something I was going to, Oh, Uber Josh, we want to say, uh, Welcome back to the world of the living to Uber Josh, who had a basically a diabetic coma incidence from not eating and going on an unsupervised non-medical water fast for too long to get rid of some illnesses that he was suffering. And it spiked his sugar, I think. And he yeah, ended his up blood in the sugar hospital. was high enough that he probably should have yeah. gone into a coma. And he had to have, um, I don't know what that's called. But I'm a doctor, intra, I should. In, intra, as a doctor, you should know this. <laughs> I do know. Uh, I just in, won't tell Intravated, you. incubated. They, when they put a tube down your throat. Tube down your throat, yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not the tube down your nose. Right. The, the actual full-blown tube right. where you don't talk very well after a while. But Uber Josh made it out. He's fine. He's he's back to flat earthing and doing his thing. So, yes. And that happened right after the first salt and sea experiment exactly. in uh, June, the one that you and I attended. So. And I can tell you as a professional, his prognosis was not good. But now it's great. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to give you what's what, a, a top bill of health. Exactly. Insert sparkly <laughs> sound here. Exactly. Um, we can write him a prescription, which is, you need to watch more Flat Earth videos. <laughs> you need 50 cc's of Flat Earth stat. <laughs> stat. I don't know. We may have augured these coats into the ground at this point. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Are you kidding? Not a chance. In fact, your coat is super stylish uh, with your name on it. I got the form-fitted uh, princess cut one, actually. Uh, did Really? Yeah, they have one. I don't know. I guess built for the female body. Um, you know, like, it's, it's curvy. It's curved. You know what I mean? With the stitching. As opposed to the male one, which goes straight up and down. Yeah, straight so, up and down. Yeah. You don't want to show it off, do you? No. Yeah, that's right. that's right. <laughs> See, and that's what it. and that's what a professional would do. They would say no. No, of course not. That would be inappropriate. <laughs> I have shown my physique a couple of times, but only strategically, kind of. Um, one time for your birthday, when I pretended to be some sort of D grade Marilyn Monroe singing "Happy Birthday, Mr. President" to you. I liked it. That was funny. I liked it. I know, and and this right now, what, what fantasy am I working on now? Oh, you, you actually, you you you're just about to leave the room, but it's like I'm just going to leave you these magazines and this cup. Gross. Uh, come, come by my office. When I mean, you're... not that it's it's human nature, but we don't want to hear about those things. Well, I'm just saying. On the secret show, <laughs> it's a family show. It is. <laughs> Mostly, I suppose. I guess it is. Yeah. Actually, it is true that this show. And your show, Strange World, are listened to by people of all ages. Yes. Uh, emails that we receive. So it's always good to keep it to keep it classy. Hmm. I have a little bit of a video freeze on my side, but really? The, but the chat is still working. Let me kill off everything oh. else. Am I good still? Uh, I still are you on? I can't tell. Uh I'm gonna kill the camera and, and turn okay. it back on. Hang on. All right. Wait. Hello. There we go. 
We're better. Okay. We're good. Was it you that froze or me? Uh, you was I. I think everything was running just fine. I saw the chat I, moving. But the video on my side was neither of, of us were working. Oh, weird. Well, oftentimes I've noticed, even if I've got the biggest internet package money can buy here when it comes to speed, right. it'll freeze up or that it'll have this weird matrix thing where a sentence will repeat and then repeat again. And then later when it makes its way from the Google Hangout to an actual YouTube video, when I look at it back, it's all smooth. Right. Nothing we can do. This is the technology that we've got. And I think really, even if it's got all of these little problems, it's amazing. Without the yeah, technology of this, we wouldn't have the flat earth modern day movement. Um, and and you again, know? you know, I, I am not, when people say, you know, that, oh, you're on this war against science. No, 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 no. I love some science. I like me some tech. Real science. You love all real science. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love technology. But as with most things, we tend to take it too far. And also and in the wrong hands, it can be manipulated yeah. to show uh, something to be true when it's not true. It's, that it's happens a, in medicine a lot. It's a lesson we should teach our kids since and, and remind them uh, annually, which is power corrupts. Always has, always will. And you should be on guard against it. Uh, we, we Heck, we've even seen it in the FE community from time to time. But power does corrupt. And when you turn science into uh, its own religion with garb, I might add, I mean, these, what are these? These are really science robes more than anything. This is what the priests of science wear. <laughs> I priests of science. Seriously, it's, <laughs> it's what they wear. And, and it is respected as such. I dare, I dare any flat earth activist to go out there, buy a 15 or whatever. I know yours cost, I don't know, $800. <laughs> but mine costs like twenty dollars. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah, you can get them on Amazon for dirt cheap because you know people go through these things. Or you can just go to a hospital and steal one, and not or whatever. That you're recommending? Uh, you not that I'm recommending. I'm saying you're probably stealing. <laughs> and then and go go do activism in that. Hold a clipboard in your hand. In fact, the clipboard doesn't even have to have anything on it. You have a blank sheet of paper on that clipboard. It's not going to make any difference. You, all you have to do is hold that up and talk to people with a camera behind you. People will stop and talk to you and you will not get as harassed. By the way, did you notice, by the way, during Clue 14, the code of credibility, I included not one, but two pictures of George Clooney. Interesting. And I'm sure you noticed what happened to George Clooney the other day when he was riding his scooter. He was on an Italian island and was obviously broadsided but by someone who was at fault and because george Clooney would never ever no use his and he, he bad rolled motor off that car him. like a boss like yeah. a man and and landed on his feet you know brushed off his he probably stuck the landing like he the, the yep. gymnasts do <laughs> stuck the landing like like the assassin characters he has played in some movies and walked away to to theme music i might add yeah i'm sure yeah. Yeah. Really cool theme music. Yeah, and and the person who hit him, just you know, staring in amazement and with tears. Yeah, his yeah, or weeping husband. openly. <laughs> yeah. So no, George Clooney's okay, uh, but I'm amazed, you guys. Nobody noticed that I put two George Clooney photos. In fact, and I did kind of inter. I did, I did the editing. I did. I mixed actors from different television and movies. Some were obvious. Some weren't. With corporate models. The point was. Can you tell the difference between a corporate model wearing a lab coat, a real person wearing a lab coat, or an actor? Chances are you can't because they're all part of our subconscious now. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of inside jokes on The Secret Show. Maybe I should have like a list so the people who just join will, will not have to ask themselves, why are they talking about George, George Clooney? Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> a long story. <laughs> I absorb. No, it's not that long. I'll, I'll give you the real quick version. I absorb a ton of media, probably too much. In fact, every time I watch a new movie, I forget something else now. There's just too much j rattling around in my head. And I consider George Clooney, Clo Clooney, Clooney, one of the last great iconic Hollywood actors. He's mm -hmm. the end of an era, basically. The end of uh, the the Cary Grant and Randolph Scott. Yeah, he's and, modern and, day Cary Grant. In yeah, my yeah. And there's there's not going to be any more. Look at any of the the up and comers. The Rock is never going to be him, or Justin Timberlake, or uh, Ryan Gosling, or Ryan Reynolds, or any of the other Canadian. A man's Ryans. man, as he's a man's man. Goes. And 
and because of that, I, I just throw him into stuff. I used him for examples and various things. And then at the end of the secret show, I will, I will try to throw in his name if I haven't used it during the show. Like tonight, I, I may not actually say his name because we did a little thing on him. It's not often I get to use George Clooney during the show. It, some people say, why does Mark say George Clooney at the end of some of your shows when you cut him off? It's just one of those inside It's just one of those things. But that, we have a lot of those inside jokes, and yeah. I don't even remember them now, but w they seem to be... Stay flat, <laughs> hail Hydra, George Clooney. And, and there's, there's tons of others. And of course, why haven't you hit the, the, the stop button yet? Which is um, what makes doing this show with you fun. And, you know, there's a lot of people critics, let's say, of the Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes channel, who happen to also be Flat Earthers, who think that Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes is only you and I, that that's the only thing that's on this channel, which is very odd in that there's well. interviews with a ton of different Flat Earthers with different belief systems, religions, models from different countries dating back to 2015 to today. Uh, but they seem to focus on the fact that this show is just you and I. Well, the secret show is on a Wednesday, but uh, for me, oh, I'm sorry, uh, four out of five doctors uh, recommend <laughs> lemonade during the show. Is that what you <sighs> went out earlier? I was talking with you earlier via Skype Messenger. Refreshing. And, uh, you said you had to head out to get some lemons, and I was wondering what you were doing with them. Uh, I'm I'm on a I'm my beverage of choice right now is lemon juice and sugar. Old school kids in the front lawn with a card table lemonade. Do you use actual lemons? No, lemon I use juice? I use um, bottled lemon juice. Okay, it's not going to ever be as good. Try it with real lemons. I, I know, I know, I know. I know. Real lemons. No, I, no, I'll be fine. I, I I'm not picky. Health I just was tip. one of the one of the things I'm on. Health tip: When you wake up in the morning, this is what I do every morning. If I'm not traveling and don't happen to have it with me, get a big glass of distilled water. If you don't like distilled water, water of your choice. Right. And then take a lemon, cut it in half, and squeeze both halves into that glass and drink it all down. And I always do a toast in my head, which is more like a, I guess you'd call it a prayer, of thanks for all the things that I have that are wonderful in my life and maybe some hopes and wishes for things yet to come. And many of those things have a lot to do with the Flat Earth community. So Mine's a little more simplified. Not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> Another day above ground. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take the dirt nap today. Exactly. Dirt nap. Yep. The, uh, no, for me, this show kind of is a microcosm of FE, which is, it's not negative. You know, it, it, I'm a big believer of um, honey rather than vinegar. And Flat Earth, out of all the conspiracies in this world, is very positive. I mean, it's negative when it comes to the fact that oh, yeah. our parents and grandparents and their grandparents have all been lied to by a manipulative, sure, domineering series of or set of people who are the powers that should not be, who have their best interests at heart and not ours, and right. probably want us dead or to continue to use us as their slaves until we do drop dead from all the GMOs and the vaccines and the chemtrails and just brainwash us into a state of stupor and stupidity. But other right. than that, it's really positive. It is. I mean, we've got, <laughs> you know what I mean. I Compared totally know what you mean, though. I like to take that positive uh, look at what's happening because I do know all the bad things. Of course it, I do. In, in With Flat Earth, and I just thought of this just now, uh, is that in, in compared to most cons most conspiracies, the people that are co that are doing the conspiracy are laughing at us. But flat Earth is so big; it's even bigger than them. So we're laughing at them. So it's like, <laughs> flat Earth. It's bigger than than any group, any organization, any government, any country. Flat Earth is bigger than it than than that particular group. So they have really very little control over the conspiracy itself. All they can do is kind of play three card Monty and shuffle around. They can hide the secrets in different places, but they can't hide them forever. And this now we're coming to whatever their backup plan is, which is, okay, what are you going to do now? 
uh, uh, the technology that you've leaked, the limited amount of technology you've leaked to the public has come home to roost. I know I'm mixing a few things here, but you know what I mean. The, the, I mean, the long distance photography technology, the high speed internet, social media, the smartphones, all these things are, work, are now working against you and you've got to figure out what to do. And so, yeah, it's still positive. And again, how many flat earth songs do you, do you have to be made before people realize this is not a dark Heath Ledger Batman type of conspiracy? We've got, I've got my, what's my collection up to? 260 tracks? That's an, an enormous amount of songs. Compare that with anything. Find me a happy or a positive song or a song with a hopeful ending that talks about 9-11 or Sandy Hook or the Boston bombing or Pearl Harbor or any American war or Roswell. Or, it doesn't matter. Any of them. Flat Earth blows them all out of the water. So the positive aspect of Flat Earth is that we have figured out a lot of things. We're still in the process of awakening to all the lies, but we figured out a lot of things. Yeah. Yet we're still standing. We're still willing to connect with each other. We're yeah. still willing to love, to share, to uh, you know, enjoy life, uh, plant gardens. I mean, I see plain permaculture who's in the live chat. Uh, so many people do have gardens, raise animals. I see uh, bling bling, the BS of the ISS in the chat. Uh, have children. Um, Robbie D of Celebrate Truth just had a baby. Many others have. We're still willing to live. We yeah. want to live. Flat Earth is very uh, life affirming. Exactly, it gives people so much hope and so much excitement that you can't see about, say about anything else. Everything else is like, oh, it's all dark and brooding and shades of gray. Not the movie. And this is you know, people get. I mean, how many times we've we seen it in emails and phone calls and live guests? It's like, yeah, Flat Earth. It's it is it is like a like a natural drug that that just charges people up. And but, I'm I'm excited to to be part of it. Me too. But contrary to what the naysayers of Flat Earth say, that the only reason any of us are involved in this is because we led lives of misery. We were social outcasts, broke, and living in our parents' basements, and we had nothing to identify with, and we were very confused about this old crazy world. And so we grabbed a hold of the flat earth conspiracy concept in order to give right. ourselves an identity. And right. that's what we hold on to, to keep ourselves afloat so we don't commit suicide. Right. That's not it. That, that is all. not that is not true. Flat earth, remember what I, what I said earlier, where it's bigger than anything. It doesn't matter how, uh, how rich, how powerful, how talented, how beautiful you are. Flat earth is bigger than you. And because that, it works its way into just about every grapevine, every circle you can think of. And we're living proof of that. We've seen some of this. And no, we've. I have met a lot of people that have had great lives, and flat earth still makes it better. Doesn't matter what kind of life you had. Yes, there's some awful lives, and, and this world is based off of uh, misery and suffering and conflict. And there's a lot of people that are in that. But even for the people that got that avoided most of that, flat earth is still inspiring to them. And which lets me know that it's it's not going to stop. And I, I appreciate the enthusiasm by the debunkers and the people that are dedicating channels against us. Really do. But yeah, all you're doing, you've heard me say it, all you're doing is firing wooden arrows into a bonfire. It looks from the outside like you're doing something. In the end, you're just making it bigger. But keep trying. It is true that a lot of people use a lot of their effort, their time on Earth to make hit piece videos on flat earthers, whether they are flat earthers themselves or whether they are globe earthers who just hate the concept. Right. They're using their time on Earth, which is very precious, rare, and we don't know, any of us, at any given moment when our, our time could be up. You could have a heart attack, you could get in a car wreck, we don't know. Why would you use your time to hate? Right. I, I don't. I don't understand at all. I, I, I do, but that's only because I've met a lot of those people. And, and it's, it's do unfortunate. Do they feel that what they're doing is going to change the world for the better? No, no. In a lot of cases, it's just negative energy that has to go somewhere. They, why don't they just do some jumping jacks? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> easier, easier said than done. I, I, people... P the, you know, this is why it's cyclical. People that have rough, rough childhoods or they have a lot of negativity in their life, they tend to perpetuate it and create sure. more. That's uh, when you hear about a man who um, beats his children and you find out that his father beat him or exactly. the woman. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it happens all the time. Or an alcoholic, both, their parents were alcoholic. Yeah, both men and women. And and I'm sorry. I am really sorry about that. But I have seen people break the cycle. And it is it's easy for me to sit here and say that. You'll break the cycle. You had a nice childhood. I did have a nice childhood. I did too. Like, Not no neither of us. I mean, I know a little bit about yours and you know a little bit about mine. Right. Our childhoods weren't perfect. No one's is no one's are. But they were really good. I didn't have any emotional or physical abuse or no. you know, beatings or alcoholism or poverty or sicknesses or I wasn't lacking anything. And I know I'm fortunate, of course, but I know people who've had those things. Yeah. They turned out to be amazing people who it, who do amazing things despite what their their shortfall was and they started this game of life and what you just said there is also a testament what we were talking about earlier which is okay why are we in flat earth you know we 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 aren't trying to crawl out of some dark you know dark horrible memory of our lives so why are we doing this well that's I, why a lot of people think that you and i can't be real oh right and and i get it sure but again, it flatter. It doesn't flat earth is for everyone. Flat earth is for everyone because <laughs> it's bigger than everyone. the The concept is so massive. There's not one person I have run into. Again, doesn't matter how elevated they are in in status, that it doesn't affect them in some way. Where they like, oh wow, because again, you could have seventeen limos in the driveway, and you you know, you you hear about flat earth, it's like wow. That's really something. Whereas every other conspiracy, it's like, yeah, I don't care. I'm rich or I'm talented or I have people to insulate me from that. This is flat earth is the one of the only things other than you know, why are we here that you can't walk away from or run away from. You can't go to your house in Tahoe and, you know, load up on scotch and say, like, ah, I don't have to. You're still going to sink in. It's not going away. Flat earth is still there when you sober up. Message to all you people who are vacationing in Tahoe. <laughs> exactly. It's not a secret message, though. No. <laughs> Wake up, Tahoe. <laughs> um, did you see the uh, uh, riding the rocket to the crack in the sky part of that new video game called Fortnite? Yes, I did. That's something that we should talk about. If yeah. you don't know about the video game called Fortnite, it has taken the young people's world by storm and some older people as well. Right. The, you, you might know more about the video game than me. It, it is the model that they are using, but yes, I do a little, know a little bit about this, uh, is very similar to every other massive game out there, whether it's single player, whether it's multiplayer or massive multiplayer in, in a lot of cases. And that is the world is based off of it. See, it wasn't hard for them to do what they were doing there with those effects. The world well, that they people build, might not even know. It's a game by Epic Games, and I believe it's in its fourth season yeah i don't necessarily recommend going out and buying it uh i'm a warcraft guy but the model is well, still there's the kids who are addicted to the game and aren't going to school aren't socializing with others and are literally sucked in in a zombie-like fashion to this game Fortnite more than any other game eh. I, look i i i am one i used to review games <laughs> for a living it's okay, but what you're seeing there is hype. The is game, it? The game, yeah, it is. It's hype. The game that sucked kids in, and you know it because you spent time with a child recently who was playing it, uh, is Minecraft. True. And that's been around for a number of years now, and that is an absolutely flat world uh, based on an entirely flat premise, and all the blocks you use are completely flat and square. There's, there's no round edges anywhere. And... But the point is, is that all these games, whether it be Fortnite or Minecraft or Warcraft or whatever craft it is, they're all based on perfectly flat, domed worlds where the sky is domed and is painted with all sorts of fun stuff. And so it's easy. So if you want to show show what's happening up there with the display system, easy. You want to throw you want to throw a crack in the dome with some fun lightning spikes. The yeah. fact that there's a domed sky at all in this video game. Yeah. Huh. I, it's crazy. I, well, it's it's easy to develop. That's how developers, anyone's Somebody out there. Somebody on the inside put that in there. Somebody uh, who knows about flat Earth true. drew that, put it in, into the computer algorithm or however it all works. We should also mention segue into kids that are influenced by games and other things. One of the youngest demographics, uh, as you know, we we talked about him I think a couple shows ago because it's been out for a little while now. The Shane Dawson video. 
which yes. has been mirrored now a few times. Shane Dawson is, in my opinion, and again, I am a professional, uh, professional YouTuber, is one of the most legit uh, YouTube channels that's that's currently out there. He's got fifth, what fifteen million subs, something to to that degree, and I have no doubt that they're all real compared to PewDiePie, which probably bought seventy five percent of his stuff. Maybe PewDiePie's real. I don't want to. No, say no, negative. no. He's a Swedish hack. He's. he's I know nothing. you just he, like him, but he is a no talent. Right. He JV. Remember, oh. you're wearing the lab coat, so everything you say is seen I'm by others as truth. When it could be Pew a Pew PewDiePie, <laughs> in my opinion, on YouTube you has been purchasing his subs and hits for some time now, and whatever marketing company is behind him, uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is that Shane Dawson is completely legit. And you're, a lot of people are going, who the heck's Shane Dawson? Well, there's a reason. is because all the people in chat uh, who don't know, he isn't our demographic. His de demographic is 12 to 17-year-old boys and girls. And basically what he does is he shares his pain and wears it on his shoulder. And that's what it really resonates with a lot of people. He, he did not have a fun childhood. He shares that with people. And as you know, there's a lot of people with bad childhoods. And, and he had a weight problem. Had a weight problem, um, domestic abuse, uh, alcoholic father. And I'm not, and, I'm not giving it away. He puts this in his, in his description. And being a boy, not having his orientation, being his toward sexuality. dating girls, yeah. yep, completely yep. girls all the time, was confusing to him when he was young. And no. pe there's a lot of people, kids in pain out there. Pe kids that are growing up do not have it like we had it. And he was one of them. And it resonates very similar to uh, Naga Haiga. I think that's how you pronounce it. You remember the, the, the Asian kid? Yes. They, 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 uh, that kid, and he states in several of his things, that he basically was stuffed in lockers most of his school career. And that person has done a Flat Earth video as well, a couple. And they are higher up in the rankings in YouTube than... Than Shane yeah. Ross. So just well, no, no, Naga Haigas, they don't have they're they're close. They're really, no, really close. But, that but, they but here, them out. The difference. Shane gets more hits. And people who watch his videos, they they give it that you know, they they watch everything he puts out there. So he did a flat earth video with his brother Jared. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the, that particular segment was 20 minutes long. It was one of the finest introductions to flat earth in 20 minutes by a newcomer I've ever seen. And I am shocked. Yeah, it was it was really really good, and I mirrored it, and other people have mirrored it, and it's a great video. Uh, I, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly encourage. In fact, it's something to show new people. And, and well, the point was is I've seen a lot of response videos by kids who are watching it. You know, watching Shane's like wow, you know, because, because he, he he's very honest and sincere when he talks. He he mm -hmm. doesn't he doesn't promote negativity in any way, and the the kids respond to this like yeah. I should maybe look into flat earth and it's it's fascinating so good stuff check it out if you get a chance and and sorry oh you don't don't continue. oh i was about to say i i'm not no i'm not going to jinx it because we haven't we don't have anything locked down yet mm. okay but, there's something that we can't tell you yet how about that well i don't think it's a secret necessarily <laughs> the um secret. well no no i can i can no mention way. it uh jared no. jared the guy from uh, the brother he contacted me because Shane I Shane Dawson's brother. Shane Dawson's brother, Jared Dawson. Who's uh, in the video that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Who and he and and I thought initially he was gonna copyright strike me. It's like, oh crap. <laughs> you know, it, well, he's like, you know, pull down or pull it down, or we're gonna send the, the goons. It's like, no, no, no. No, but he was saying, no, we we uh, like to to do um, a flat earth segment, something but more. That's and, because he knew who you were. He knew yeah. about flat Earth clues. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Was... Probably part of what helped him formulate the idea of flat Earth in the first place. Right, completely unsolicited. And so, if we can get all our ducks in a row, we are going to try to do a meetup. Maybe, and I'm not. I'm. We are not committed to this yet. Uh, down in Los Angeles, and hopefully, they will be a part of it. Early part of next month, maybe. Maybe, maybe. maybe. We're, again, we I'm know. still, I'm still waiting. They're trying to put together, running around because they, they know, like some of the other projects we've done, they can see the potential. Everybody that comes into flat Earth and they're, they've been kind of probing around, see how big it, it can be, and so it's like, okay, what can we do with this? What, how, how can we, how can we, you know, put the spotlight on flat Earth and turn it into something? And so I'm hoping, hoping they do. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, anybody who comes and films a meetup, I'm all for it because then people get to see real people who obviously are 
totally normal and legit who spent their time to come from really far away places to to meet and you know people don't do that generally people stay in their home or they stay glued to their phone right. um, they really only associate with very close friends or family members or those that they work with at the office but for people who are literally strangers from across the plane or in their their mind the globe <laughs> right. mainstream view to get together in a park or you know in a restaurant or bar and and meet to really total strangers and feel the affinity that flat earthers do for each other immediately is something it it's it's magic it's it's uh yeah. it's worth it for anybody who comes and covers that sort of thing with a yeah. film crew yeah uh, yeah and i've done how many meetups have i done this week last minute again guys i don't mind that you're sending me last minute flat earth things but try not if, if it's only like 48 hours until the meetup you're not going to get much much exposure, even if it's on my channel. But I will, and I, I'm not going to guarantee that I can even get it done that quickly. Although I probably can. So Mark does meetup videos. Yep. He does it because he wants to help the community. And if you have a meetup that you're planning, your group or just you, even if it's the first time ever, and you want to meet up in your city, pick the place. Right. Email Mark at msergeant23 at comcast.net. You know, tell him the place and the time and the date, and he will put a video out exactly video or get more I people will, to show up i'll shoot back an email in all caps saying get away you vultures that'll never happen <laughs> probably never happen so yeah it, i think it's a really nice thing it's a service to well, the community I mean, it, it really helps because i it's it's i have gone to enough meetups now to where and you have too, where you see the excitement where oh people my gosh, are all yes. of a sudden around around people for the first time that accept you and you feel like a, I mean, I felt like a fangirl kind of feeling when I met Dee Marvel or Paul on the Plane or um, anybody that I meet, you know, that I've seen on YouTube. And that's ridiculous because I'm on YouTube too, right? Um, you feel this feeling. It's not a fan. It's a, yeah, I know, it's you feel you know them kind of in a way that maybe even their own friends don't know them. <laughs> Dee Marvel, he's not that great. <laughs> With all those muscles. Come on. <laughs> muscles aren't everything mm, all right <laughs> oh. uh, why i never let's see let's go in the live chat and see what's <laughs> happening awaken mind hey ginger sugarbush 905 is here hey ginger uh, sugarbush that's my stripper name <laughs> gross flat plain oregon is here um eddie imperial is here uh ginger Jason sugarbush Gamble. is a tall red-haired uh, Canadian guy, by the he way. He seems very tall and he's thin so, as well. I, I said that so nobody starts like hitting on him. It's like, yeah. hey, Ginger, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, that's funny. Um, Lucy Lemons as well. Uh, who else is in the chat? Oh, Ace McLeod, who comes in, you know, when the show's almost over, saying first. <laughs> that's funny. I remember when Ace used to always call everybody a shill, jokingly. He's done with that. Now he's into first. <laughs> Um, Ute is here and Plain Truth is here as well. Thanks to everyone for being here in the chat. I figured that there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Let me. Activism, millennials, toast. I like toast. Do you? I'm talking about toast. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about toast. I've got you mean like time. a toast to something? <laughs> no. Or just bread oh, in that's an oven? good. That's good. Uh, we could talk about the. What can we talk about? I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm scanning through because we missed last week, so I'm scanning. Oh, through. we missed last week. It was Wednesday. It was Fourth of July. So right, Fourth of July. So I'm Things looking through just general stuff. Oh, um, the I'm going to have a subject matter expert on my show next Ooh. week. I'm pretty sure. And what he, will the subject be? He is going to be a U.S. Army scout. And you're thinking, no, that doesn't sound like much. And it's That's like, not no, what no. I was thinking. I was thinking, what does a scout do? Well, exactly. It's like, scout? What is that? Boy and Scout? It is a, uh, no, we don't, we can't, I don't think legally. We Looks for talent about. like a sporting scout? No, no, he's a U.S. Army scout. So he looks for people that should be in the Army? 
<sighs> says, hey, no, you, no, you wait, stop, find stop, a stop. Man, I will explain. man and woman? Or I will woman? explain using my code of credibility what oh. the scout does. Uh, 19 Delta, he is drives around in a Humvee with a giant box on top, and he uses a special laser thingy. That's, that's a very technical term. And uh, finds targets out in the distance. And then he shoots back the coordinates to the tanks and the artillery and anybody else he can and shoot those guys. So the scouts go out and, and they're like the old scouts of old. You know, scouts would go on the top of some no, ridge now. With yes, binoculars. Yes. Now they go with Humvees with big, giant electronic scopes. Kind of like a like a ground radar, only a little more sophisticated. And, and he has shot a lot of things because they deal with a lot of small arms because it's a light force. And he says everything from a sniper rifle up to a tow missile, uh, they never take a, into account the curvature or the Coriolis effect. Never, ever, ever. I just and have to add this, although all of that's going to make for a great show. War is ridiculous. Why don't they just play a video game? A real national or international video game for, to mimic war. Uh, so people don't have to die, and property doesn't have to be destroyed, and animals and land doesn't have to be destroyed. Because the whole point of war is to drain resources out of the other countries. Well, yeah, but you can be all based on money. Money will come out of each country's account. No, it's got to be physical resources. It's got to be. It's eventually, yeah, it, it comes out of gold resources and silver. Physical resources can go. Phys it well, just seems that there could be if we have to have war, which I don't think we do, why can't it be on a video game with goods or services, money or land? As being long as there are men, there will be war because men covet. Uh, there's a reason why it's on there. Thou shall not covet are thy other country's goods and services and or land. It's usually over land. It's like, I want this region of land. I'd love to build something here. Well, there's somebody living on it. Well, move them out. And then you get in discussions, discussions break down, and then you go at it. Somebody runs out of guys to fight with or resources to supply those guys, and then they cave in and you redraw the borders. So, sorry, I, I know wars are not a good thing, but it, it is what men do. War is hell on the home front. You as a sophisticated academic... Scientist. Yeah, scientists. <laughs> yeah, scientists are not big big believers in war, and yet we do have scientists that take the big money to develop things like napalm and neutron weapons and other things. So, well, scientists in general will take money from different pharmaceutical companies to okay a certain type of drug that has horrendous side effects that result in death, death, and more death. Hey. Scientists need BMWs too, right. right? They're not immune to the luxuries Scientist of life. Scientists' children need to go to Harvard as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, which reminds me, by the way, it was another little thing I got to bring up. It was an article I read, and it's a little off topic, but heck, it's it's just us. It's a secret show. So yeah, it's a secret show. So let's go off topic a little bit. One of the other things that's kind of helping Flat Earth is the millennials. And I know you and I have talked about the millennials. We blame them for all sorts of things, even though it's not their fault. Truthfully, they have been dealt a immensely bad hand. But I think they think that their life's amazing. No, 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 they don't. No, really? They, no, good Lord, no. Um, they, they've got some sur superficial stuff, and they, the stuff they put on in social media makes it look like they think their life is amazing. Well, but, remember but when we were young, when you wanted something, like a new record album or a new pair of jeans. Really? We're going to date ourselves that, well, that far back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back when I bought vinyl. <laughs> I still buy vinyls. So. But, <laughs> Back when I was using secondhand eight tracks. <laughs> exactly. But when we wanted to buy something like a new pair of jeans or a record album, it would be a lot of, you know, after hours school job or, you know, allowance money or saving up to get that. And because the cost of those things was more than those things are now, things are less expensive now. And so, well, children have so much more given to them by their parents than the, when we were young. The little things, yes. But there is one very, very big thing that happened. And I'm not exactly sure who started the trend. I should probably do some research in this. And that was when you went to university what it cost you beforehand and i i know you know some people it's like look i knew yeah i knew a few people that had student loans and they were always under 10k worth of student loans if they even had student loans i mean for god's sakes i went to i went to college on couch cushion money it was it was that you know state colleges were cheap 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 back in the day and nowadays 
it's six figures. It is guaranteed six figures. You send your kids to whatever school it is. It's it, you're gonna they're gonna have a six figure student loan because the parents aren't paying it. Like no, we are not paying a hundred thousand dollars for your school if it's not Ivy League. Ivy League, of course, that's a whole other thing. And so when these kids are getting out of universities, and since once the economy you know did its horrible thing back in two thousand seven, they do not have the jobs to make any headway against that debt. Can you imagine having a six k or six figure debt when you're twenty two? It would be it would be crippling hence the term crippling debt and because of that i'm getting back to this eventually because I'm of that believing everything you're saying by the way because of that coat so continue uh, well there you go yeah well because of that the <laughs> the these uh young adults are lost they don't they they they, they realize that they're gonna have to hunker down at a job they hate which they do, and they don't. They 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 really hate the, the positions they're in. They they thought it would be this magical thing that everything would be given to them uh, in a in a, a very easy way. But there's two things, of course, that cannot. One is a long term worthwhile career. You actually have to put in the elbow grease for that. It does not come easy unless your father owns a company. And and, and also long term careers, like in the old days, where you end up getting the watch when you retire. Oh yeah. People don't have those careers. No. Jump, leapfrog, and yeah. it's totally a different game now. Yeah, it is. And so they're lost. They're they're disillusioned. They're in this state of limbo. And they, they're they wondering when, the article is very, very interesting. I'll send it to you. When they're going to feel like they're an adult. There's this mm -hmm. lot, they, you know, the, when the transition is like, oh, I'm an adult now. I mean, so a lot of them, you know, they can't afford to have kids or you have to choose. Again, this other thing. Never before in our history did you have to choose between a house and children. You know, owning a house or having children, because chances are you are not going to have both, especially when you have that six figure debt hanging over your head. It's weird. And because of that, it is all kind of playing into the social media thing, which where we live and breathe and survive. Uh, and and they are looking for all sorts of, of interesting things to uplift them. And you're not going to find it in the general conspiracy world. You will find it, though, in Flat Earth. Absolutely, you will. And it gives, again, it, it, it's not me trying to do the whole recruiter thing, but it does give you that ray of hope. Maybe uh, that's why games like Fortnite, which are geared toward them, have little aspects of Flat Earth thrown in. Sure. Hmm. Hmm. Why not? Anyway, I, I feel bad, but at the same time, there there is light at the end of the tunnel, and I still do believe in a potential golden age that flat Earth could segue into. I really, really do. If it is done right, you could you could transition flat Earth into a whole new literal awakening that would change the world. Well, we're trying to do that every single day, right? Exactly here on this show and, and in the labs. strange world and yeah. in, in ton of the peep ton of the people who are in this live chat are doing it on their channels hello to high fruity you and carl stenbeck and marilyn wiseby hey hi rob morrill too so i mean i've just named a couple of channels that are doing that with with their with what they put out there they're putting out positive energy they're putting out information um plain permaculture says learn from living learn from nature creation learn from the people around you learn from inside yourself right so cool i want to say hello to caroline walter feaz chick zulu one is saying that her name is too long <laughs> <laughs> lazy uh, hello to Uptina Walker. So nice to see you here. And hello to Chocolate Saiyan. I may be getting that wrong. All right. I don't know. And uh, Stephen Chess is here as well. And Peanuts Clark. Um, thanks to all who've been here during our show. It's been a fun show. And I've enjoyed wearing the lab coat. I feel so much more intelligent. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, and we should too. we should bring these somewhere. Oh, I'm absolutely where we... bringing them. I've got I've got a strategy. I'll talk about it online with you. But okay. uh, it, yeah, I'm definitely bringing this. I'll have to wash it. I'm kind of sweating underneath it. It's hot. Mm. It is not breathable. I wear a lot of breathable stuff. It is. Is your soft material or stiff material? It's fairly stiff. I mean, it's yeah. Mine's very stiff. Yeah, it's not. It's not something I would wear on a regular basis. But it, it, again, it serves its purpose. But I'm going to definitely bring it to Canada. And I don't know if I'll wear it for my set, but I will. Um... Be fun to mill about wearing them at one point. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. I'll bring mine to Canada too. Yeah. Yeah. Something fun. Cool. Um, information about the uh, conference coming up in Edmonton, Canada, and the one coming up in Denver, linked in the description box. 
Um, I said I'm putting a video in there. That'll be in there too. The article that uh, the Houston Chronicle um, did on Flat Earth when they came to my house in Houston is also linked in the description box. And uh, Mark Sargent's channel and his uh, uh, website are linked in there as well. So, hey. Until we meet again, any final words, Mark? Uh, let me see. Uh, check out Strange World, Stay Flat, and uh, Hail Hydra. And there was one more thing. I, I can't remember. Nope, I lost it. Okay, well, yeah. keep it flat. Oh, wait, it was George Clooney. <laughs>